Hi everyone, I'm Toluca from Markers and Minions where I help teachers feel more effective and confident by providing them with high quality resources and a supportive teacher community. If you're new to my page, please click the like button and if you've been here before, please give me a heart or a thumbs up, something so that I know that you're here. Before I jump into today's topic, I want to let you know that I'm really excited to be launching a new online course that goes over all of my tips and tricks and strategies for teaching Benchmark Advance. I'll teach you efficient planning strategies, how to make your units more accessible to your students, more engaging, and just how to have a lot more fun and confidence in teaching your Benchmark units. So if you'd like to be notified when the course officially opens up, you can join my waitlist, which I will link in the comments. And when I'm done with the vi this video, I'll put it in the caption as well. The course enrollment will only be open for one week though. So if you'd like to be notified, um, you'll want to jump on that right away. Hi guys, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Okay, so today I want to talk about planning out units of benchmark. Um, it's really easy to fall behind when you're uh, teaching your benchmark units uh, because a lot of times your lessons can accidentally like carry over into your next week if you don't get to them all in the first week. And so what happens is you end up drawing out your benchmark unit and by the end of it, you're just like, okay, I'm done, stop. So I wanna talk about uh, three tips that I use myself or used when I was in the classroom to kind of condense my week and make sure that I didn't go over five days. So number one is to plan using planning templates. So yes, Benchmark is a very thorough program and it has your whole week mapped out for you, all of the lessons and the planning's done for you. Um, but the point of these templates that I created when I was first teaching Benchmark years ago, the po whole point was to be able to take those lessons out of the TRS, process them, and then put them down in my own template. And that process, first of all, is really easy because it's just plugging them in. Um, but that process really helps you stay on track, target exactly what you need to teach and really like own the unit and make that unit yours. So that's going to help you um, have a really clear vision of the week and hopefully make it so that you accomplish what you feel you need to accomplish in that time. Um, number two is to trust the spiral. And I, I come here on here a lot and talk about trusting the spiral. And it's usually in the context I'm talking about like keeping lessons mini and not going over the, you know, 20 minute marker, um, even if your students aren't getting it. But um, and trusting the spiral, knowing that that lesson's going to come up again and you can have another chance with it, basically. Um, but in to, in, for the purpose of today, I'm reminding you sort of for a different reason. If you've fallen behind because maybe something more meaningful came up in your lesson plans, or if there was some kind of distraction that came up that, up that throws you off schedule, remember you can always get to that lesson the next time. It's not the kid's only opportunity with that lesson, like to learn cause and effect, for example. Your cause and effect lesson is gonna come up probably lots of times in your unit, okay? More than once, typically, you know what I mean? So if it comes up, for example, if there's a lesson that comes up all three weeks and in week one it's jam-packed and you, you miss it, trust the spiral and just allow yourself to be like, okay, give yourself some grace. Like I can get to it in week two or I can get to it in week three, okay? And the last tip is combine when you can. So I like to look for lessons that I can combine throughout the week. This one's not always a possibility, but I have been able to find lessons that kind of go well together that I can teach either totally together or like back to back piggybacking because they're so similar. And that really frees up a lot of space in the rest of the week because you're able to kind of move things around. So plan using the templates, trust the spiral, and combine lessons when you can. Those are my three mini tips for you to try and keep your week of lessons within a week. <laughs> so that's it for today. Loving these short little Sunday videos. I almost forgot today is actually because we were at the pony rides all day today. And on the way home, I was like, wait, it's Sunday. I need to get, <laughs> I need to get online. Um, but anyway, next Sunday, I'll be on here to talk about creating the perfect anchor chart 
to help you introduce benchmark concepts, unit concepts, and kind of pre-teach and provide a scaffold for your students. Remember to turn on notifications for when I go live so you can catch me next time. And I won't forget. <laughs> I'll see you then.